Hey there, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com with another business video tip for you. And hopefully this is one of the last videos that you'll see me in this office space. Uh, we're actually moving uh, this month. We bought a bigger house and are selling this house of mine and uh, moving on to the next chapter of our family life, which is really super cool. We're excited. Uh, so. Um, I'm pre-recording a couple videos because I know during the move I'm going to be in chaos and I won't have the office space decorated like I want to do some moves. So, and as you can see, it's pretty bare in here because we had to sell our house, so we just have the one picture. I have to have my little big picture. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about the difference between planning and visioning. Planning and visioning, right? So a lot of you have probably already done your big picture planning for the year. Maybe you even did a vision board this year already or visioned for what you really want. Maybe you're a fan of affirmations and seeing yourself at the end of this year and what you're going to have accomplished already, right? And those are all really super cool. I just want to make sure that you have <clears throat> distinguished between the two, planning and visioning. Visioning to me, and you can take this advice or not, of course, uh, it's how I see it, and you could see it differently, so that's fine, and you can totally comment below uh, the video here where you see it. But planning, uh, I'm sorry, visioning to me is more like um, seeing yourself where you wanna be and some big picture things uh, that you want, right? Uh, not necessarily attached with a timeline, a number goal, or um, some kind of um, um, measurable factor, right? So when I wanted a, a new car about 10, you know, I think it was 10 years ago, I wanted a new car. It was a Lexus, right? At the time, I had no money. Who, who was I to buy a Lexus, right? And, uh, but I had a picture of Alexis on my vision board and I didn't know when it was going to happen, how it was going to happen, whatever, but I knew that was the car I wanted and, you know, it took a little while and of course I had to get an inheritance in order, but then I bought it with cash and everything and so that was amazing. I got my Alexis, right? I put Oprah's face on my vision board one year and, uh, because I, I was like, okay, I want to be on Oprah. I thought, okay, everybody at the time wanted to be on Oprah. This was about, I don't know, nine years ago, ten years ago and I did get an opportunity to uh, pay to play to do a little uh, trip to go to Chicago to actually see a couple tapings of the Oprah show so technically I saw Oprah <laughs> um, and then while I was there I got invited to be on the Oprah and Friends XM radio network uh, as a guest so I was actually on her radio show which is super cool so I technically could check that off my vision board uh, being on Oprah technically I wasn't really on the Oprah show but you know how it works so sometimes we put out things on our visioning that are big things we just don't know how or when they're gonna happen and that's good I think and, and especially if you can look at them every day I always had my vision boards right here to the left of my computer and I can see them every day um, and um, I just think it helps give us inspiration and hope and a lot of times our why is on here. I had, you know, when I wanted to get married and find a, a man, you know, I had a vision of happy couples and, and an engagement ring. And, and then when we were, I actually had the man, I was like, okay, now I want to get married. So I had a picture of a, people getting married on the beach, right? So I think it's important to have the visioning component of your big picture planning. Um, and then some of those things you can actually plan. So when you do get engaged, you can actually put dates on a calendar and plot out the, the strategy for how it's going to happen, right? And when things are gonna happen and all that kind of thing. But with the Oprah thing, I, would, I could have never planned that. I could have never planned how I was going to get into the Oprah sphere, right? So um, it's important to have your planning process though too for your business and your life, right? So I know in my last video I was talking about you first. I was talking about make sure, making sure you put you first on your plan. So what do you want to do for yourself in this next year, right? What do you want to do for yourself? Do you want to have, do you want to lose weight? I mean, a lot of people put resolutions in and, and weight loss goals and stuff, and that's great. And I have my own of those. Trust me, after the vacation we had in Cabo, I need some weight loss. <laughs> uh, but 
so, but beyond the resolution, I don't believe in resolutions necessarily because people usually drop off of that. You know, we joined a gym this last year. We joined a gym. I think it was in April though. And we went like once or twice and then we never went again. And we're like, oh my God, why are we paying this? You know, it was for the whole family too. It was ridiculous. And so we're not doing that again. We get our exercise and, and stuff elsewhere. But the, the point is not a resolution, but a plan, right? So planning, what do you need to plan for your personal life? We want vacations, we want um, family time. So one thing I did with the meetup that I run, I run a Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network here in Sacramento, and it used to be in the evening, once a month. It was just once a month in the evening, but there's also other meetings that I go to in the evening. And I don't wanna be gone that many evenings, frankly, anymore. I want family time. So I changed it from a, an evening meeting to a luncheon. And yeah, some of the members can't come, right? And other members can come. And I even moved the location because it's gonna be closer to my new house. Well, you know, I'm running the meetup, <laughs> so I can do that, right? You can do that when it's your own thing. And I encourage every client that I have to start a program or do a program or a meeting or an event around what you want, not what you think everybody else wants. The right people will still come, right? But I plan, I strategically moved the meeting from dinner to lunch so I could have more family time because I was finding I didn't want to go to my own meeting right, uh, in the evening. I wanted to stay home with the family. And so I am kind of a homebody, right? Whether you, whether you realize that or not, I am. And, and so that was important to me. So that's one thing I shifted this year. I'm also looking at how much I travel. I'm not traveling as much for speaking. I can do a lot more webinars and podcast interviews and stuff and, and reach as many people as I could in person and not travel as much. And it'll probably save me some money because I don't have as big of a travel budget, right? Travel budget. So those are some personal things and they're slightly business too. Uh, then in business, planning wise, talk about, you, you know, the SMART goals, you've heard it. You have to have measurable goals. So I usually do it by the, like the number of people I want in a program or the number of people I want to get added to my email list or I usually do it by a number goal like that because I know if I hit X number of clients or X number of people in a program, I know that I'll hit my money goal. So you want to have a money goal too and don't just pull a number out of the air for your money goal. Please have a strategic money goal that you can uh, wrap your head around and then divide it by 12 and then divide it by four. And then what do you have to make every week in order to hit that annual goal? A lot of people don't do this. They just say, well, I wanna make six figures, I wanna make six figures. But then halfway through the year, they barely made 30 grand and how are they gonna catch up for the rest of half the year and make twice as much, over twice as much as they did the first half of the year, right? Because they weren't, you weren't keeping track on a weekly basis. So do something on a weekly basis to track your goals. Uh, I have one client, Kim, who's amazing at planning and hopefully she's watching this because I heard her the other day on a on one of our group calls and she was like, well, I have this plotted out and this plotted out and she has spreadsheets and, and things for her weekly planning and reflecting on what worked and what didn't work and that's amazing. I don't do that much strategic planning, frankly, um, but some people need it and some people want it. If you need it and want it, then you better have it, right? I have planning tools that I can use with clients and I do with certain clients and I don't use them with others. Some clients want just like a big picture um, goal, right? Some need more um, weekly and daily uh, structure and some don't like that. So I don't like to impose any one strategy on everyone. So you don't have to do that. You do what fits you so that you know it'll get it done, right? When I first started my business, I went to the SCORE, right? The um, retired executives or whatever, the people that did your business plan for free with you, <laughs> the class that you did for free, right? At the business center. And it was like this 28 page written report that actually got stuffed in a drawer and I never looked at it again because I don't look at big documents like that. Why would I do that? I look at vision boards, I look at lists. I'm a list girl, right? So the, my list of things to do today is right here on these little sticky notes, right? I, I take my big list and I pull off a few things every day and that's what goes on here. But planning wise, I'll tell you, when we go back to the planning a little bit, I actually like mind maps. It's a visual, right? So here's like my mind map. This was, I have to update it a little bit for this year, but this is a mind map and it looks a little messy. 
But these are my projects that I want to work on. So there are projects uh, that I want to complete by the end of 2018 or that I want to launch. So I'm launching a printed newsletter this year. Yes, you heard it here first. I want to go back to printed newsletters in the mail. And I don't, I mean, if I don't have your mailing address or I don't know how to, if I don't have a correct mailing address for you, you won't get one, but you're gonna wanna want, you're gonna wanna want one, you're gonna want one of these. So make sure you get on my email list because I'm gonna do a promotion soon to where I can get your mailing address if you would like to receive this printed um, newsletter. You know, it's gonna be a, a, a lot easier to read than watch for emails because I know emails just come and go and people delete emails and they don't get seen as much. So I want something that you can actually sit and, and read um, on your own that it's going to be good valuable information that you can use in your business so that's my goal is to do a printed newsletter and I'm also going to be creating a podcast this year I know I keep saying that but things keep coming up to put it off <laughs> uh, which now we're moving right so that's going to put it off another month so oh well it'll get done when it gets done and this is the thing you can't like you feel guilty about oh my god I, t I totally was supposed to get this done by you know last November or last December, I kept promising it to people. What are they going to think if I don't do it? Well, who cares? Who cares? I'm sorry if you think that I should have done my podcast last quarter, but it didn't get done because of whatever reason, right? I'm trying to have more family time. I had a vacation. Now we're moving. So the podcast got put up and that's just the way it goes, right? And you just kind of have to have that attitude and, and change your timeline. You know, if you have a goal and you don't meet it, don't beat yourself yourself up just move your timeline out a little bit now if you catch yourself keep moving that timeline maybe it's something you shouldn't be doing or maybe it's something you should be delegating maybe you could be delegating some of it right so those are just some ideas to get you visioning and planning for this year if you haven't already done so uh, so hopefully that help that helps and if you'd like to talk to me I'd love to talk with you about your business your website your marketing your planning anything that comes to mind uh, just drop me a note or sign up for a a call with me if you go to askcat.biz it's jumpstartyourmarketing.com or and there's a page there under my about for a strategy session or you can go to askcat.biz and sign up there and we'll talk. We'll talk and see what you're doing, uh, making sure you're on track. You know, um, I'm very, um, that call is not pushy at all. I wanna, I wanna see more entrepreneurs succeed and make a lot more money doing what you love. And so I do, I give tips and advice on those calls all the time. And it's funny how not a lot of people sign up for those anymore because they think I'm just gonna be here to sell you. And that's not my goal. My goal is for you to figure out what you need and get where you need to go so that you can make a lot more money doing what you love. So don't not come to a call because you think I'm gonna sell you. That's not my objective. My objective. My objective is to see how I can help you, okay? And I'm here to serve you. I'm making good money and I want to share the wealth and I want to give some tips to people who really, really, really need it and want to make a difference in the world. So hopefully I will talk to you soon. Uh, oh, and make sure that I do have a paid um, masterclass coming up if you're if you're on the if you go to the website go to the events page uh, the third Friday of every month this year I'm holding a two-hour masterclass it's on zoom which is a video platform where we can see everybody right and it's all laser coaching it's two hours of me just coaching everybody and I some some of my clients come to it some people new come to it that have never worked with me before it's a great way to try me out as a coach to see if you like me it's seventy nine dollars I mean it's it's less than you can you know take me to lunch for frankly so and you get advice from a whole bunch of other people too and a lot of different perspectives on what you're doing so it's two hours well spent if you want to take advantage of that I would love to have you on the next two hour masterclass or sign up for anything any one of them this year and uh, hopefully I can help you that way. Okay, have a great year, you guys. I'm so excited. All right, bye now.